Hi, and welcome back to another session. Um, now we're looking at seed germination. Again, I re remind you this is what we're doing in class in our first lab work on this topic. And we're going to be looking at seeds. And we should notice that the, uh, we look at the seed parts in a minute, but I won't preempt that too much. This is how a seed develops into a young plant. Now we can see here, the, this is a first leaf developing. Here is the stem part of it. Here is obviously the root structure. And as we'll see, it grows and changes as we go. And <clears throat> the parts that I didn't mention in the last one, I think we can see where we get done growth coming out, which is a node. And when we get a new, if you like, a branch coming out, a new leaf development, and down the bottom you can see that the old part of the seed is gradually getting smaller and smaller and smaller and it will soon disappear as the seedling becomes a young plant. It starts off with the root system coming down. Now the root will tend to grow towards the soil and it's basically searching for water. Um, it's a bit of a story. It, it develops in getting that by osmosis which means that basically it absorbs water because there's more water outside the root than there is inside the root and water moves in. Now to help do this, you'll notice along here that sidling little parts, root, little parts of roots, sort of secondary roots will start to develop on the way down. This is a major part of a root and this is a tap root in this case. And these other ones will develop because it gives it greater surface area to absorb water and soluble nutrients into the plant. Right, the other part we do is we see that the shoot, which is the stem and leaf part of the plant, will also develop. It grows upwards. Now this grows in response to gravity. The root grows in response to gravity. This grows in response to searching for light because these things require light. These leaves, when they fully develop, the true leaves. Now remember that as something is developing, this is its food until these start working. All right, let's push on and let's make that a little bit more definitive and clear as we go through. So what is a seed? All right, a seed is a baby plant. Now, most of us know seeds. We probably even eat seeds. I love my peanuts and cashews, and I'm sure other people do as well. And there are lots of seeds we eat in as part of our daily diet. They provide us with lots of things like uh, fats and oils, um, carbohydrates as well. So these provide us with energy. So they're good storage of energy, and the energy is stored in this part here. The, it's called the endosperm and it's basically s food storage. Now while a plant is, or while a seed sorry, is um, sitting there doing nothing, a lot of times the endosperm is not being used because the embryo hasn't asked for it to be used yet. The first stage in germination involves this being prepared and what actually happens is moisture comes in and is absorbed in this area and then the food is able to be transferred into the embryo so it can grow. Right, so A, the big food area. B, here, is the baby plant, or the cells that will develop into the plant. And D is the protective coating. Now, if you go to your notes in the student notebook on this, you will find there is lots of information which gives you the scientific terminology and it's very interesting for you to be able to keep up with those. When scientists do this, one of the, the key terms we have is a thing called a cotyledon. Cotyledon, all right? Cotyledon is the name for a seed part. One part, two parts. Two parts, mean dicot. Di means two, mono means one. All right, so in this part of the seed, this is like a bean seed or a peanut, if you like. So I can split it in half, in half very easily. This is full of food, this is full of food, 
here is the developing plan down here. All right. Seed coating we can't see, it's on the outside. Now, when these develop into things, the number of seed coats will decide what sort of plant we get. A lot of the grass-like structures have a one-part seed. And probably the best example I can think of that we would all know about a seed that we can't really easily split in half, like we can split a peanut in half or a bean in half, a bean seed, comes together neatly apart two mirror images of each other. All right, but we can't do that with certain things like corn. Corn has one part to the seed and it is a monocot. It is probably one of the best examples. I doubt whether we'll ask you that in the test, but you never know. Dicots, on the other hand, are these ones, two parts, and of course, peanuts and beans and peas. And as I say, it's very easy to divide them into parts. You can split them very easily. When we start new growth, we call it germination. And one of the things we do expect you to know is what is required for a plant to go from this stage down here at stage one up to stage two, three, four, five, six, seven, and become a young plant. So what is needed? The amount of people who tell me each time I ask this question in class that we need light is huge. But we're going to see that that is wrong. Seeds do not need light to start and germinate. What they do, as I mentioned before, is they need water. If there is no water, the seed will not germinate. And one of the first things that happens is the water diffuses into that seed. And what the first reaction it causes is for the seed to swell. Now the swelling causes the seed coat to crack open. And this helps the embryo come out. All right? So essentially one of the things that would help do is make this really dry, solid endosperm or stored food become available for the embryo. So key number one, water. No water, no germination. Second thing it needs is temperature, increased temperature. Now one of the ways it gets this is this is why, if we think about it, a lot of plants start growing again in the spring. And in the spring, the weather starts to warm up. The air temperature rises. And consider the whole thing that plants and living things in general are essentially big lots of chemical reactions. And one of the biggest things about a chemical reaction, as I've said here, is that when we make it warmer, we make them go faster. All right, I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. When we actually warm something up, we actually make it go faster. So, in other words, turning the food into the energy needed for the plant to grow happens faster. If it's too cold, it won't happen. Everything slows right down with the cold. All right, so a way of doing this, and what we do, and it's amazing how the temperature of the soil does not vary that greatly. Year in, year out, it basically does not vary that greatly. If we put a plant a couple of centimetres down in some soil, or a seed a couple of centimetres down in the soil, the soil temperature is different from the temperature in, above. It could be very cold above, or very hot above. But underneath that soil, the soil has a bit of insulation properties. And provides an, I've said, even temperature here. And this helps the plant or the seed germinate. So we can help this germinate by simply planting it into material which keeps it at a nice warm temperature, doesn't make the temperature go up too much, doesn't make it go down too much. So the seed is able to get on with this job of germinating. So, so far we've seen the seed needs water, good temperature, suitable temperature, Probably instead of there, it needs suitable. So I'm going to put that in just to keep it there and maybe something you could put in your notes. Mm. 
is that the seedling, when it's growing, needs to have a suitable temperature, otherwise it will not. Too hot, too cold, no good, just right. In some ways it's like Goldilocks. The soup is too hot, the soup is too cold, no, that's the temperature, I like it. Alright, so we've got water and temperature, two things to start off with. I think there might be another one at least though, let's have a look. This is another misconception that people have. As soon as we talk about plants, we talk about photosynthesis and we don't talk about respiration. But believe it or not, respiration occurs in all living things. Plants are living things, so respiration occurs there. They need to be able to convert the food they've created, or the food they have in this case stored, into energy they need to grow and repair and things like that. Okay, so this means that seeds need oxygen. So now we've got water, temperature, oxygen. Now the key about this is that lump that that cotyledon thing I was talking about before, the stored food, that should be enough to allow the embryo to develop leaves, to grow to such a stage that it's now got leaves and then it can use photosynthesis to create more food. If the plant is not able to do it by that, that's a bit of a problem. If the plant can do it by that, no worries, it still has a bit of stored energy probably left in its cotyledons, but the cotyledons are probably going to drop off and the plant will just go on its merry way using photosynthesis and respiration to keep growing. This is important, so I hope you are getting some of this down. I'm going to put something else about this in the environment with us, but I mightn't give it to you today.